Hebrews 10. Verse 10 to 11. And I heard a loud voice sing in heaven. Say that one word with me. Now. 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 Not tomorrow. But now. Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accusers of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Amen. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Say this with me, and we overcame him. And we overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of our testimony. By the word of our testimony. I want you to just open your heart and hear what the Holy Spirit asked me to tell you this morning. In verse 10, four things are mentioned. Salvation, mm -hmm. power, the kingdom of our God. Some versions say the authority. Mine says the power of his Christ. These four things are mentioned in verse 10. Salvation. Power. The kingdom of our God. And the authority of his Christ. It says, now these four things have come. Mm -hmm. Say with me now. 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 It's not a theoretical now. It's right now. Amen. Now. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Why is God saying now it is coming? Because it says four. That four is telling you why God is saying now these four things have come. It says for the accuser of the brethren. is before God. It says day and night is before your father. Telling your father. David keeps talking bad about himself. Susan has an addiction problem. John can't keep his eyes off girls. 
Mary can't stop. This one has porn problem. This one has a masturbation problem. This one has a drug problem. Day and night, he does not stop. Some of this. says they overcame him him who the accuser they overcame him the, the Lord is asking me to tell you it's not only the accuser they overcame they overcame the accusations. So the him there is the accuser and his accusations. Are you listening to me? Yes. They overcame him by the blood. Come to the next phrase. I want you to stay there for a second. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And the Lord said to me this morning the blood gives you the right to a different testimony other than that which you have been accused of. I need that to sink into you. The blood of the Lamb gives you the right to a different testimony other than what you are accused of. I need this to sink in. This is what this means. You may have watched porn last night. You may have masturbated last night. You may have slept with someone last night. You may have gossiped about people last night. You may have had unforgiveness before you walked into this church. Come on, come on, be real, come on. But the Lord is saying, right now, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of the Lamb is saying to you, that is not who you are. The blood of the Lamb is saying to you that is not who you are any longer. Amen. In other words, the Lord is saying you do not Say I am saved. When you stop doing all these things. <clears throat> you say I am saved. Because blood was shed for me.
not only are you saved, you have the power to be different. Remember I told you four things I mentioned in verse 10. By the blood, not only are you saved, you have the power to be different. Yeah. Hear me, you have the power to be different. Not only do you have the power to be different, your identity has been changed. You have become part of a different kingdom. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of our God. Amen. And you are not a servant, you are a son. Amen. I want you to take it. I want you to take it. The Lord is saying, the spirit of dominion functions. Who or what you think you are. The Lord is saying salvation, the power of God, whether you partake or not of the kingdom of God, whether you partake or not of the authority of Jesus Christ, hinges. you identify yourself as. I will draw you to this. By the blood. The person who watches porn. The person who masturbates. The person who sleeps around. The person who gossips. The person who has an issue with pride. The person who holds bitterness or forgiveness. The person who is ashamed of the way they look at it. The person who struggles with depression every day. The Lord is saying that person died on the cross with Jesus. person died on the cross with Jesus. If you do not see that, you will never stop becoming, or you will never stop being that person. Do you get that? If you never see it, that that person died by the blood of Jesus, if you never see it, you will never stop being that person. What is the Lord saying? The Lord is saying in the blood of Jesus who you are was changed. In the blood
blood of Jesus, who you are was changed. It was nothing that you did. It was everything that he did. The blood represents change for you. A change of identity. If you plead the blood over yourself, then you must begin to see a different you. Otherwise, you do not really believe in that blood. Let me repeat that. If you plead the blood over yourself, and you still think you're an addict, and you still think you struggle with stuff, and you still think you struggle with issues, then you do not really believe the blood. You are changed in the blood. You are changed in the blood. When you come out, you do not come out the same. I said to you at the start, I had a lot to say. And last night, I was praying in my spirit. Is that what I am supposed to say? And I woke up very early this morning and I, I, I was just praying in tongues, praying in tongues, praying in tongues. And around seven this morning, it gave me the dress. I said, talk about this. So I'm going to break this down for you. So by the time it goes into your stomach, you've truly properly. Because you're not going to leave this room the same. Amen. You do not overcome Satan's accusations, which the truth is, are true for many of us. You do not overcome those accusations when you stop doing those things. Is it making sense? You do not stop being a porn addict when you no longer watch porn. No. You do not stop being someone who gossips in church all the time or gossips about your friends when you stop gossiping. No. It's when you see yourself changed. That is where you stop being that person. It says, by the blood. By the blood. And the Lord was telling me during service, that's why some of you, you have to be pushed to praise Jesus because you don't know what the blood did. So you have to be pushed, praising, praising, praising. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know what the blood did. Yes. Amen. If you knew, the people who sit around you will be irritated. <laughs> you can't mean Because they will not understand what you understand. They won't understand what you understand. Mm -hmm. 
Your identity is changed in the blood of Jesus. That is salvation. Amen. That is power. That is the kingdom. And that is the authority of Christ. Mm-hmm. By his blood. But the Lord is saying, blood gives you the right to a different testimony. Mm -hmm. You may have done stuff last night that you don't like. But right now, this very moment, the Lord is saying, you have the right to think different about who you are. Are you getting this? You may have watched stuff you were not supposed to watch last night. You may have weed or whatever last night. You may have argued with your spouse last night. And they said to you, this is who you are. You're always that way. And you said back, this is who you are. You're always this way. The Lord is saying right now, right now, the blood of Jesus Christ gives you the right to be a different person. Not just gives you the right, it's saying you are different. Identify yourself with that person in the blood. You are exactly what Prophet One was saying. You are trampling on the blood. If you do not identify yourself with who you are in the blood, you are trampling on the blood. If you do not identify yourself with who you are in the blood, you are trampling on it. When the Lord was speaking to you, Prophet One, I was just saying in my, in my heart, okay, Lord, now I know what I was supposed to say. And I keep telling Chris that he is much more prophetic than he thinks. Do you not understand why you're singing that song about the blood? Mm. He was singing the message the Lord gave me. It says you overcome by the blood. You do not overcome. You see, in 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 alcohol, anonymous or whatever, you know, it's a big deal when you haven't, you know, taken a drink for however long. They celebrate it. <laughs> do you see why there's a smirk on my face? <laughs> God is saying that, that that doesn't mean you've stopped because you haven't done it in six months. It doesn't mean you're not alcoholic. It is when you identify yourself with who you are in the blood of Jesus that places switched. Places switched. The sinner switched with the sinless one. (laughs) 
the guilty switched with he that is guiltless. There was a switch. There was a transition. And the Lord says to me, that's why he said, Prophet, wait last week to cut off your past. Because who you think you are, according to the blood, is not who you are. He says to me, that's why he said, Prophet, wait to cut off everything in your past. Amen. Amen. Are you getting this now? Yes. Because who you think you are is not who you are. The blood identifies you as different. Right. But sons of God, you must identify yourself with it. Yes. Right. You must identify yourself with that identity. You must say to yourself, this is who I am by the blood. Yes. And the Bible says that is how you will overcome. Yes. Not because I'm not guilty, but this is who I am by the blood. That is how you overcome. Yes. By saying to yourself, this is who I am by the blood. Forget what I did last night. Yes. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free. To proclaim freedom for the prisoners. To proclaim freedom for the prisoners. To proclaim freedom for the prisoners. This is the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. The blood of Jesus is saying, up until 20 minutes ago, you had issues. Some issues you've done very well to hide. But right now, I am saying to you, you are free. Thank you, Lord. Because of the blood, you are free. People of God, if God says you are free, you do to yourself a humongous injustice to think you are not free. If God says to you, you are free, you are your greatest enemy to think you are not free. Amen. This means there has to be a transition in many 
many of your perspectives about yourself. There has to be a mind shift concerning many things in your mind. There has to be a shift in your perspectives. Hear me. God is saying salvation, the power of God, partaking in the kingdom of God, partaking in the authority of Christ, begins with who you see yourself as by the blood of Jesus. Jesus said it himself. As a man of thinking, so he is. It does not matter whether you did it last night. It does not matter that you've been struggling with this thing for six months. It does not matter how long you wrestled with this habit. It does not matter How little you have, how little you see yourself in your own eyes. But as of right now, the Lord is saying to you, the way you overcome that thing is by the blood. If you have never known what it means by the blood, it means your identity is changed by what Christ did for you on the cross. Every time from now you plead the blood, it means you are testifying of being Does it make sense? Yes. Satan may be accusing you of what you did last night. But God is saying, open your mouth and declare a different testimony about yourself. Yeah. Right now. 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 Yeah. Declare something different about yourself. Right now. for you, but it's for another day. Mm. 
<laughs> Let me close with this. Where does faith come into all of this? You have to learn to start being true to this identity. You have to learn to start being faithful to that identity. You have to learn to start being faithful to that identity. Let me explain this. There are two, there may be more, but the Lord said to me, there are two pillars. But let me backtrack and say this. I shared this on Friday, I think, recently. We'll talk about this in a minute. But if you take faith like a banana and you peel it, the essence of faith is faithfulness to God. The backbone, if faith was like a body, or faith, or faith was like a house, and you took away everything, the foundation that would be left. If faith were my body and it took away all the flesh and the eyes and the skeleton was left, the skeleton will be faithfulness to God. Does it make sense? Amen. That is the skeleton of faith. Faithfulness to God. Amen. Now, the Lord said to me, there are, there are two pillars to this foundation. There are two pillars that, that, that uphold this spirit of faithfulness, obedience, and loyalty. Right. Let me explain it to you. Because when he said that to me, <clears throat> I asked him what the difference was between loyalty and faithfulness. They're very, they're, they're, they're two very similar words, right? And faithfulness. In a sentence, you, you can interchange them, and they most of the time mean the same thing. But I asked him, what was the difference? That's how he began to explain to me that two pillars make up faithfulness. Obedience. And loyalty. You all know what obedience is. Now, now let me quickly say, let me quickly expand a bit about obedience. I'm going to drop in something that I, I won't talk about today, but I'm going to drop a word that the Lord gave me in the Spirit. Say with me, divine impulses. Divine, divine impulses. impulses. Say divine impulses. Divine impulses. Say one more time. Divine impulses. Divine impulses. Okay. Like me, I like driving fast. And I, I don't know how to drive slow. <laughs> <laughs> so the Lord has been teaching me some stuff because if I were to drive from here to Colombia and you put a slow person in front of me there's a 90% chance I could fall asleep that's, that's the kind of driver I am because the adrenaline keeps me awake I'm not going to lie to you that's the kind of driver I am some of you go to the movie and you fall asleep. That's who you are. But from today, say something different about yourself. Amen. <laughs> Don't worry, I haven't got a plot. So, I'm talking about divine impulses. There'll be times when I'm in a hurry. 
and I zip through, I zip through traffic. And, and the Lord will say to me, okay, that right there was a bit too aggressive. <laughs> you feel it as an impulse in your heart. It's like something impresses you that was too aggressive. That was a divine impulse. Are you getting that? Yeah. Second one. Have you ever said to yourself, I'll catch up on Supergirl or, or, or I'll catch up on 24 or I'll catch up on what else is there? CSI. CSI. <laughs> and, and next thing you know, you've been staring at your iPad for, for five hours. Catching up. CSI. Oh, CSI. Or oh, you're so bullied, you don't know what I mean. Okay. Now, at the end of those five hours, at the end of those five hours, something impressed on your heart. That was too long. Zero yeah. means divine impulse. Divine impulse. Divine impulse. Are you getting what? Are you getting what divine impulse is now? Yeah. Now we can take this on a different day and we'll teach on that. But I just I need to touch on that because you need to learn what divine impulse is. Now you must begin to obey those divine impulses. If you keep discarding it, you are walking in disobedience. So if you think God never talks to you, but you get divine impulses every day, every hour, but yet you say God doesn't talk to you. And you get divine impulses all the time. Are you understanding me now? Okay. That was obedience. Loyalty. Now, you could have an issue with drugs or drinking or whatever, and you do it in January, and then you don't do it till March, and then you do it again maybe in October. When you, when you keep breaking your disobedience, mm. when you keep breaking your disobedience, you're being disloyal. Mm. Again, yeah. when you have a consistent obedience, mm. that is loyalty. Yeah. Yeah. Loyalty is unbroken obedience. That is loyalty. Loyalty is unbroken obedience. obedience. Those two things are the pillars of faithfulness. Now you understand that the Lord is saying you must begin to learn to be faithful to your identity in Christ. You must begin to learn to be faithful to your identity under the blood. Don't break it. Don't don't break the disobedience. Don't break it. You're being disloyal. Be loyal to that identity. Be loyal to what the blood has made you. Be loyal to what the blood has made you. Be loyal to it. Right. Yeah. That being said, myself, Anthony, and you know, Gabriel, we had a guy's movie afternoon some time ago, and we're talking about this. And I, for example, 
It's not that I don't notice girls in, 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 in yoga pants or tight jeans. I'm not blind. <laughs> but I am not an unfaithful husband. Yeah. 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 Just Just like I like nice cars, that's something about me. I like nice cars. It doesn't mean I'm vain, I just like nice cars. I notice when someone has a nice car, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna steal their car. I stay true to my identity. But I notice nice cars. No. You're being given secrets about the power of the blood. That's right. Amen. That in that blood, who you are was changed. Right. And now, go into the blood and see who you will need to be. Amen. And be. Close with this statement again. Go into the blood and see who he died to make you become. Yeah. And then be that person. Yeah. Go into the blood and see who he died for. He died to a princess. He died for a king. Now be that king. someone in the blood that person is real the person who was struggling with stuff last night that person sorry as far as God is concerned that person is dead the stuff you are struggling with I have breaking news for you. As far as God is concerned, that person is dead. He died in Christ. Amen. <coughs> there is someone new in the blood. Be that person. Yeah. If you refuse to see yourself as that person, then it's your problem. That's right. That's right. Christ did everything. Yeah. Uh -huh. But you're refusing to accept it.
All right, now for the second message today. <laughs>